<clears throat> hey there, grumpy old fart here. Um, there are many artifacts and relics in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, and I don't believe any of them are more infamous or reviled than the eye and hand of Vecna. I suggest you read up on them as a dungeon master, read up on these items before you put them in your game because they can really, really destroy your campaign. They're that powerful. Uh, the, the, the powers vary depending on the dungeon master and the campaign. In Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, they, they list how many of certain powers they have and there's a table you can pick from, but the powers themselves are left blank. So the dungeon master gets to either roll randomly or choose which powers to put in there. Uh, so they're different in each campaign. That's cool. The bad part is the stuff that's already set as per the book that these items do by themselves can destroy your campaign. So let's get down to the down to the, to the some history of the of the items. Vecna was a supreme lich who very nearly succeeded in conquering the world. His right-hand man, or lieutenant, was the evil and ruthless Kos, K-A-S, Kos. The only reason Vecna was defeated was that Kos betrayed and slew him. In doing so, Kos himself was also killed. Be sure to read upon these legendary villains in the Dungeon Master's Guide, pages 157 and 158, and the Sword of Kos is on 161, so read up on those. It's rumored that Vecna's, Vecna's phantom still roams the world so people are kind of <sighs> leery about talking about her open about him openly because i keep wanting to call it her because they a vecna but it's a, it's a guy the point i'm getting at is people don't want to talk about him openly they, they speak about him in hushed whispers because they don't want his phantom to hear them that's how bad vecna was vecna's eye and hand survived costa's attack both of these items, or their body part, these are body parts, have been lost through the ages. The eye appears as an agate until it is placed in an empty eye socket of a living creature. Then it glows like that of a feral creature. Once pressed in, it cannot be removed unless the owner or the wearer, the host, whatever, is slain. Immediately, the eye turns the alignment of the host to neutral evil. Evil neutral evil and it can never be changed infravision and ultravision as well as other abilities are granted but they and they can be used kind of willy-nilly it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if they're used or not but once the primary power is used it, bespo it bestows a malevolent effect why any good character would willingly put this thing in their own eye, in their own eye socket is beyond me. Generally, only evil player characters will do it, and that's where you, the, the, the problem is coming in. The hand of Vecna appears as a mummified extremity, a, a blackened and shriveled hand, possibly from a burned body. If the wrist portion is pressed against the stump of a forearm, it will graft itself to the limb and become a functioning member. It, the hand works after that. The grip alone has 18 double lot strength, but because it's in the grip and not in the arm, it doesn't. You don't get any weapon bonuses or anything like that. No hit or damage bonuses. The minor powers of the hand can be used without consequence, just like the, the eye. As soon as a major power is used, a spirit of great evil is awakened. The Dungeon Master should begin an insidious campaign of suggestion and urging towards evil on the player character's part. Now that's as per the book. When a primary power is used, the host becomes neutral evil. Very, very evil. The more the major and primary powers are used, the less of a chance that there is to sever the member and be free of it. Once that 100% is dropped down to zero, because every time you use it, that percentage drops, once it reaches zero, they, it can never be gotten rid of. Now, the, my, my wife and my son jokingly said I should do this, and my son really wanted me to because he watches a group, a DD and d group online on YouTube, and I can't remember what they're called. They had a guest who's a pretty famous uh, celebrity, 
and they were going after the hand of Vecna. They were going. I, I'm not sure if they were going after Vecna or whatever, but the point is, this guy betrayed them. It was. It wasn't anything personal. He, his character. He was playing his character, and at the end, at the, his ending scene was when he chopped the hand off and put Vecna on there and teleported away. It, 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 Joe. I want to say his name was Joe Manganella, Magnelia, something like that. He was in uh, Magic Mike's, and he is married to Sophie Vargara. Great, great guy. Great dungeon play, dungeon master player and dungeon master. He's a uh, he's big in the D and D world. If you haven't checked him out, do so. Uh, he played brilliantly in that game. Uh, my son watched that several weeks ago, and he has been chomping at the bit for me to do a Vecna video. So here it is. Here's a warning. I have played in games where. Players have gotten Vecna, the hand of Vecna or the eye of Vecna. I have played in games where somebody has gotten both. I have run a game where somebody got the hand of Vecna a couple of times because they specifically wanted to find it and they quested for it. As a dungeon master, you can't really tell them no, so you have to go. But but here's here's the problem. I've been playing D&D since the 70s, and in all that time I have never seen or heard of any player character that got the hand and continued to play that character in the game. Other player characters do not trust them, and, and rightly so. So party unity suffers. The, nobody wants to work with them, because they become this very evil thing that wants to kill everyone around it and rule the world. You know. Most of the time, the party tries to eliminate the host player character. They either want to get the hand off him or, uh, or, or kill him if they can't. If they can't get the hand off, they want him dead. They want him out of the group. At, at very least, he's been ostracized. It's just, it's just not good for your campaign. If you, if you have a group of evil players and one person gets the hand... They might get along with them, but at least in the mean, you know, as, as, as on the face of it. But somebody somewhere is going to want to do away with that guy and get the hand for themselves. That's the nature of evil players. Anybody who wants to be subservient to that guy, they're still evil, but they, they take a secondary role. Most player characters won't want to do that. Most players won't want to do that. Uh, anybody in, in a good party that gets the hand... Immediately, you know, the other group is not going to want to work with them at all. It's just the way it is. So be very, very careful. Read, read up on these things very carefully, and be very careful in when you, you want to put these things in your campaign. They'll, they can really be d detrimental. They can do a lot of damage to your campaign. So just keep that in mind. The items are wonderful. It's the effect that they have on the group that's bad. You folks have a good day. God bless one and all.